How's it guys and welcome back to Rex to Rides where we are still turning your hard earned cash into unfinished projects and broken dreams. Speaking of unfinished projects, well, <laughs> we're getting there. Anyway, here's our 84 Isuzu KB2000, it's a 2 litre the G200 motor. Um, it was, I guess you could classify a wreck when you got here, there were a few issues, well quite a few lot of issues and um yeah uh, we we have been making a bit of progress working bloody tirelessly on this thing i'm telling you is uh, it's unbelievable the amount of work i don't know how these guys in these car car shows manage to do a car in two weeks fucking hell i don't i don't believe that shit man this is this is a lot of work and uh anyway um so here it is this is where we're at uh Let's start off with the engine bay. Most of this car is original. I don't think you can actually call this a resto mod because there's not like really a lot of modifications. The only modifications have been on the electrical side, um, which we'll go over a few of them. But uh, for the most, everything is original. This is obviously still a carburetor model. The fuel pump, mechanical fuel pump, which sits here, we, we've blanked off. Um, this engine came with uh, a few issues. It was running but it had a crack in the head and that crack only opened up an operating temperature now normally when you take this thing to an engineering they pressure test it but they don't pressure test unless you specifically ask for it um under operating temperature so the head we got had been skimmed a lot of times and obviously there's been an ongoing problem oil and water mixing don't understand why and then go redo the head gasket check and there we go mixing it is same thing happened to us and uh anyway so i got i got another motor this is still the original g200 that numbers matching motor that came with the engine but the new motor which i paid a thousand five hundred for um had a head which was near perfect on it so what we did was now engineer that and obviously skim it it had a spark plug stuck in and they had to obviously weld it up and cut the thread in because you can't put an insert. Um, the extra motor is here, all in that box and on the engine stand. So, you know, it's it's, it's in quite good neck. Could do with a bit of a, a hone and the bearings and and end, but that's, that's really just, it's a toy we're going to be playing with. That's it, the G200 same motor so luckily we have not one but two engines so what have we done in here um here's our interesting our summer winter selection and what this thing did was it just diverted there was a pipe coming down here uh, that came from the manifold that would put warm into the motor get it warm quicker uh, so in summer it's open here in winter it is open that way but I've cut that off because what has actually been happening was it extends out and it's been cutting on the HT leads. Um, mechanical fuel pump actually works. Uh, we have now, I think, two of them. I don't know where the other one is. Uh, no, 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 we've got one. It does work, but we'd already put in an electronic one. And what happens is, we've done here, is we've taken a 8 millimeter hose pipe in, a T-piece, and then a three millimeter hose pipe out so that actually works as a pressure regulator our air filter had a it was broken off here so not mounted nicely we've mounted a bracket on and then here is a bracket that i believe came from an extra and uh that came come around here and now i've got a little plastic bracket which i've made up to route these ht leads nicely um to find a set of uh bogey cords that are the correct length is pretty much impossible um so we stick with these uh, I'm, I'm not sure if you want to you know put on the homemade ones because then you always sit with a spark plug suppressor problem and on the radio and everything not that we have a radio but anyway uh the quail is original obviously um still working lovely and all the, the brake um Booster, all good, all original, all working. Wiper motors, everything. Would you believe this little thing over here for the wipers, the sprayers, which is just a little aluminium pipe sticking out there. 
all original, still working. Uh, that connector costs 170 rand. That is, Susie, I could probably have gotten one from a pet shop that they use for fish tanks, but yeah, uh, we did it that way. So here's the engine bay, nice and neat. I have um, just had to change this a little bit. You know, for shits and giggles, I uh, sprayed the tapa cover red and then the air filter blue looks kind of nice. And that sort of theme sort of carried through the motor to the bonnet stand. And just on this, we also got us some brand new bonnet stabilizers. These are very important. So they were a bit fraught. So we got new ones from Isuzu. They're about 250 each for a bit of rubber, but Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. I mean, let's face it. We still got this badge, which a lot of these old Isuzu's don't. Um, number plate holder we put on with a couple of spaces in here. Uh, otherwise, it'd be sitting at an angle. This is still the rubber. It's been sprayed with 2K primer and everything. So that's pretty okay. And it's a bit dusty at the moment. We've just gone with, um, you know, the, the grill was looking a bit not so great. And uh, the bumper was looking terrible, needed a bit of straightening. So we've just gone with a gloss black on it. We still have our original uh, indicators on and original headlights. We've not changed all that yet. Radiator, everything else. So you see, it's mostly original. Uh, it's pretty tidy. Um, we have added, this is South Africa, a number of layers of ele electrical security on the motor, which would make it a little bit harder to steal. So you can see here, a fuse boxes, couple of relays mounted down here. And then, well, I found these hooters this morning. They're really standing out in this video. Um, 600 bucks for the fucking things. I thought, no, nah, man. <laughs> Opened the box, looked at them, and I thought of that and that and that. And I thought, oh, shit, you know, let's just get it. You know, the old, it had two. Uh, one was here, the other one was here. And it was a bit uh, a pasty, the one wasn't working, and and they just looked really horrible. And they had small, nice black ones at the shop, but um, the problem with that is they only had one. And you have to have matching ones, because these things are wired in parallel, and one's going to pull more power. We don't know what it's going to sound like in that. Anyway, you've got these two little fucking rocket boosters or what, I don't know what they are. But this side of the, the the engine bay was pretty empty, and I and I got to tell you I like as you can see a relatively nice clean tidy engine bay, but the gap sort of um, put it out of balance. So let's see if we can give you a bit of an overview on it, with everything being on the left. So those sort of balance it out. It was I don't know. <coughs> I guess when you're doing a build like this and a lot of the stuff. I mean, apart from the Suzu parts, um, have been all sourced from the local hardware, the local uh, uh, part shop, and you know, the guys at Fastron, I quite like them. They got they got all these little weird things, grommets and stuff like that. So, you know, they they're not tied in um, by franchises or anything, and they know what sells. So, we can get a lot of the parts there, and that's great. They can even get headlights, indicators, anything you know. A lot of the stuff for this. They even had a grill that fits on here. Off the shelf. So it's quite incredible. That sort of covers up our engine bay. We've done a full overhaul on this. Um, seals, bearings, everything. Head gasket, the whole lot. Uh, engine, gearbox, prop shaft, diff. It's all been done. Um, so our drivetrain is good. And everything's good on the motor. It's just not running yet. Um... So that's the engine bay. It's looking quite tidy. Get onto the rims. These are the original rims. So I've decided to, when we get some budget in, I do have the trims that come on the inside here. Um, haven't installed them yet, but once we're done, we are going to get them sandblasted, new tires, new shocks, and suspension, and all those bits. That's what we're getting to. So, but that's a bit of a price on that. So, anyway, on the back. Yeah, we still have, we have an original unused tonneau cover. Um, I do have to make brackets for these and fit that. 
there's two of them and uh, then I've got to get the primer on this flattened and check for any spots and then we can start doing our final coats on the back there you can see in there is a little red fuel tank keeping up the, the color schemes here um, so what we'll do here in the back again the wheels and uh, the leaf springs we're going to keep them standard we're not going to add an additional leaf on that um, we don't want to, you know, I don't think we're going to put heavy, heavy loads in here. And they seem pretty good. Uh, so we'll just do a leaf spring recondition on that and replace the shocks. And then we should be good to go. I think the brakes are all good in the back. Um, I did have a look on the other side. I think they're great. So now we move around to the back. Obviously, the tailgate needs to go in. It needs to get done. It's over there somewhere. And, uh, yeah, there you have some brand new lights on the back again fast run motor spares and a number plate everything is working uh, there is the back step over here but I need to modify it so I can put a tow bar on because yeah we're going to use this this bucky for work so it's going to have to have a tow bar um, anyway so I don't even want to look at this this still needs to be done and uh so yeah, I've got to tell you, you know, it's a, it's a great thanks to Fastron for their, you can see our paint is not too shabby. Um, <coughs> this is Hearty's Auto Coating. Their products are great and their service is phenomenal. They're actually going to come out and they're going to help you if you've got any issues. They're going to come out to your house and have a bit of a chat. I always enjoy going there, very chatty bunch. And Hanman Fasaki from H&M Motorsports. Uh, H and M maintenance. They have done. He's done a superb job. Man, he he put everything everything into this motor. He really gave it its due attention, and uh, it's lovely. It's beautiful. I'm um, very happy with him. His attitude is fantastic. You know, especially with the issues we had with his head, and and his service is phenomenal. His workmanship is there. So, you know, he's also a bit of a attention to detail kind of guy. And um, and I enjoy that, and I enjoy him as a person. He's great, fantastic guy. So I look forward to a lot of work with him, uh, especially when you get more vehicles in. You know, I know I can take a motor to him, and it's going to come back on a budget, and it's going to come back right. But when she wipers work, that's a that's a like a wow. Um, kind of enjoy that bit. And you know these it's these little things. Uh, let's close up here. These little things that that's where your money goes when you're doing a build. So these we've sprayed. You can see there's a bit of orange peel in that light, but I'm sanding and polishing down a, a wiper arm, um, but new wiper blades, new little aerial, and again. Rear mirrors, brand new, fast road motor spares, so there's H&M maintenance, there is Hartie's auto coatings, and there is uh, fast Tron to thank for the assistance in this build, and of course me, because I've been doing the fucking build, um, this whole car is a keyless car, uh, this is South Africa, so I'm using... What is actually my favorite, man, these things are it's cheap, man. It's under 400 bucks for this. You get two remotes, you get the central locking. And it's a very, very basic. And if you know what you're doing, you can wire up immobilizers and anything you anything you like to this. So, you know, there you have it. It is locked and immobilized. And then when you unlock it, boink. There you have it, green light. Green means go. So even if you break this door open, and that light's still going to be red. So let's simulate that. You are not going to start this car. For starters, you are not going to start it. Oh yeah, we're missing a lower part of this. So if any of you all got one of those, give me a shout. And there's a lot of light coming in here. Your key there's nothing in there that just turns so we don't really need that we keep the key in case you have to unlock the door with a flat battery and open up for petrol because i made that mistake once 
So this car works, your ignition is over there, and it's dead at the moment. Now once you have climbed into your car, it's open, you can now, without needing the key or anything, just bonk ignition on, that will start up. Your start button is right there, and that's it, that thing starts up like that. There is an override, and it's obviously the handbrake light. But let's see if we can get that in focus. Everything is working here. There is our voltage, a little clock. Oil pressure is great. Gear shift's normal. <coughs> there is an override, so if you do lock it whilst the ignition is on, your doors will lock, but it isn't going to switch off. So I'm actually going to get some lights on here. Oh man, that, that looks really, really so nice at night with all the wall litter and everything. So the interior is great. And just for now, I'm going to do that. The reason why I've turned off the lights, because if you turn the lights on and the ignition is off, and you, oh, let's do this this way. And your lights are on, and you turn off the car, and you get out the car. It's going to give you a buzzer. I love that feature. I always put that feature in all my vehicles. Uh, so this is the interior. It is all original. It's all working. Um, the only... I think what one would consider being coming close to a resto mod, I mean, apart from the, the different ignition, um, would be to add a Isuzu Trooper power steering to this. But for the rest, it is all original. The radio I haven't put in yet because, well, I don't know where we're going to put the speakers. I've got it. I may put little enclosures up at the back here, but anyway, we'll put it in. It is really, really, it is a tidy little Isuzu on the inside. Um, I haven't even taken out the seats and given them a clean, but that's what we're sitting with here. I haven't done a bit of a hoover on the carpets. And again, it starts like a dream in our glove compartment. We have its book. And we have a couple of these. So it's pretty much all there. It's got power. <coughs> Obviously for the radio, it starts like a dream. We can start that up again. I always enjoy that. Just like that, you know. That is fantastic. Everything is working. Everything, the temperature gauge, the uh, oil pressure, Volt meter, it's always just basic stuff, but you know, it works and it's very clean, very tidy. So, there you have it a little, a little tour de Isuzu. This is still its original uh, ladder loader, I think. I mean, it's not much of a roll bar, is it? Um, so, that's been done in the black. I have thought of putting maybe a cage or a bigger rack on it but you know let's just keep it neat like that um i think at the most what i'll want to do here is is really just put a few things in the back and and pull a trailer so here's our progress we are definitely definitely getting very close to the end of this project and this is a project i've i've really been enjoying um Already looking forward to the next one, so thanks for your time.